So if we go back about 150 years to 1859, uh, basically, the first discovery of oil and gas was in Pennsylvania by the Drake well, and about five, six years later, you can see the picture on the right, uh, there was a mad flurry of drilling at that area in Pennsylvania. They didn't know really what they were drilling for, but all they know is when he drilled his well, he found some oil, and they all started drilling for it. Were they informed about what they were doing? Did they have a good idea? No, but they knew they could... Uh, if they could produce it, they could turn it into kerosene, etc. at the time. So about 100 years later, starting in 1965, uh, the industry decided it, it should really define reserves better to gain consistency, which hadn't been the case. And from 65 to about 2007, there was four or five different versions, what they called the McKelvey box, which tried to break things into reserves and resources, which I'll discuss later. The SPE started working on definitions of proved and probable reserves. Uh, the United Nations is still involved in a, in a way with their United Nations classification system. But the fundamental one now is the SPE, which is the Society of Petroleum Engineers and the World Petroleum Congress, who started it in 97. And it's sort of matured through to 2007 where it's now what we call the SPE, WPC, AAPG, and SPEE, which are defined at the bottom. The document is called Petroleum Resources Management System, which the acronym which is universally used almost is PRMS. And PRMS is the underlying document of most of the major stock exchanges in the world for reserves definitions. That would include uh, the SGX here, the Australian exchange will revert to it or convert to it late this year. The Hong Kong exchange, Toronto's stock exchange, and the London exchange. The SEC in the US is, is somewhat similar, but not exactly. 